I scan the faces of the boys in my senior year high school health class and my eyes land on Jay. I stand up, I walk across the room and I ask him, Jay, will you marry me? He says, yeah, sure. And that is how I became a bride for the first time at age 17. In 2005, during my senior year of high school health class, we did not learn about health Instead, our assignment was to continue the annual senior year health class tradition of completing a marriage project. We were instructed to partner with a classmate, preferably a classmate of the opposite sex. Only once all boy and girl options were paired would same-sex couples be allowed to make sure everyone had a partner for this health class project of planning our own wedding. That is why at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, I was standing in the classroom of my gym slash health teacher, Miss B. And instead of drafting teammates for a flag football game, the girls were acting as the captains and drafting our dream grooms for our fake high school nuptials. Now, I am not typically the kind of student to butt heads with an authority figure. I come from a family of teachers. I was a strong student, a goody two shoes most of the time. The few times I acted up in school, it was totally justified. For example, one time I informed my English teacher that he had clearly copy-pasted a pop quiz from sparknotes.com. Like, it literally still said sparknotes.com on it. And I felt he could have exerted more effort on his part on creating an original pop quiz for us. If I spoke up or caused trouble, it's because I disagreed with an assignment that I believed to be a poor use of our classroom time. No project rubbed me the wrong way as much as this senior year health class assignment to plan our own wedding. I felt it was weirdly dated, not inclusive, and quite frankly, completely off subject, considering only one of our four marking periods each year included a health class. And I believed senior year health class was our last chance to learn about our bodies before college. <laughs> like, I didn't even know what a UTI was, but apparently I needed to know the average price of a wedding reception DJ in the tri-state area. <laughs> the teacher's pet was pissed. Miss B, our gym slash health teacher in charge of this, was an unmarried woman in her 20s or 30s. I do not know why she felt this was something we needed to be graded on in order to receive a diploma in the spring. Was she being forced by the administration to push this archaic curriculum? Was she crowdsourcing ideas for her own future nuptials? <laughs> was she uncomfortable teaching teenagers about their developing bodies? Who knows? But if her goal was to make this class memorable, she did. <laughs> because I felt this project was quite stupid. As a high achiever who cared desperately about my grades, I knew refusing to plan a fake wedding was not an option. I would not allow table settings to impact my GPA. <laughs> so instead, I would plan the most unconventional wedding this small conservative town had ever seen. And enlisting Jay to be my spouse-to-be was step one of that plan. My classmate, Jay, was going for an emo or counterculture thing. He had long, dark hair that hung in his face, dressed exclusively in black, and he never smiled. Jay looked the way I felt about this project. <laughs> he was a quiet kid. He did the opposite of what every teacher said, and no one in class wanted Jay to be their groom. We were opposites in many ways, but we both knew one thing. This project was whack. I had known since an early age I did not want a wedding because as an eight-year-old flower girl, I did the math in my head and I felt the pomp and circumstance was put on primarily for others' enjoyment and that the money spent on a wedding and honeymoon was far better suited investing in your lives together after the wedding. My personal fairy tale was getting an education, a career that supported me, and remaining debt-free. If I were to marry, we would elope and no one would be there. The antithesis of the New Jersey weddings I had been accustomed to attending, where you had to show proof of big hair and big budgets in order to obtain a marriage license. To begin our high school marriage project, each couple in the class was given a budget of $25,000 and tasked with making a wedding scrapbook. 
We received points for each portion of the planning we completed. This included things like writing our love story, <laughs> finding our wedding attire, and selecting wedding favors. This assignment required printing out and gluing photos and the cost of each item on the marriage project checklist into a physical scrapbook we compiled. We were graded on the completion of the marriage project scrapbook, a quiz about our marriage project, and our wedding budget. <laughs> then we moved on to part two, life after the wedding, <laughs> where we spun a wheel to learn our jobs, like the board game, life, and we budgeted that new life together. This was also graded. Then after all was said and done, we were allowed to learn about babies. In our health class over the next several weeks, Jay and I began working on our marriage project. As is always the case in the annual marriage project, the girls do most of the work and the boys do not really help at all. <laughs> this was still largely the case for Jay and I, but he did make some key contributions when it came to our fake future together. I asked him questions to make sure both our visions were incorporated into our fake wedding. To select a wedding date, I asked, when should we get married, Jay? He looked at me and answered, Halloween. <laughs> the look in his eyes suggested that he expected that I, the goody two-shoes, would respond with, no way, Jay, Halloween. But instead I said, that sounds great, Halloween it is. <laughs> Our teacher would hate it. We selected and printed out all the things on our checklist in order to glue them into our scrapbook. My wedding favors for my bridesmaids, rhinestone thongs. <laughs> Jay's wedding favors for his groomsmen, a flask, a cigar holder, a knife. Most of our proposed purchases were from eBay and as cheap as possible, with my goal being to use the least amount of our budget as we could in order to avoid supporting the wedding industrial complex. <laughs> I also sought to demonstrate that a couple can get married without spending $25,000 if they wanted to. On one of the final pages of our scrapbook, Jay offered to draw a portrait of us on our October 31st wedding day. He captured me in a floor-length gown, wearing a tiara and gripping my bouquet in one hand, his hand in the other. He didn't draw what my garter looked like. He was a gentleman. <laughs> but yes, I did have to print out a photo and price of the garter belt that I would wear at my high school wedding. As for himself, he's depicted holding my hand, wearing an oversized orange tuxedo, a bow tie, a ruffled shirt, and black patent leather shoes. He drew his long dark hair in his face, so you can't really see any of his features. We both look forward off the pages of the scrapbook with that closed mouth smile, non-smile stoic look like an emo early 2000s Halloween-y version of American Gothic. He even gave me collarbones, and like, I don't have visible collarbones. <laughs> he did a great job. Some of my high school friends were offended that they weren't selected to be in my wedding party on All Hallows' Eve, <laughs> dressed head to toe in all black, to which I assured them I honestly hadn't wanted to invite anyone to my wedding, and had only done so because my teacher threatened to deduct points if we didn't have any guests. And also, in a rare moment of tenderness, Jay told me, I would really like to have my grandma there. <laughs> he was really sweet. For part two of the assignment, Life After the Wedding, we spun a wheel to be assigned our careers. Jay was a police officer, and I would be a lawyer. For our household budget, we showed how we managed to live below our means, driving a 2003 Toyota Celica, living in a small apartment, and we wrote down such insights as, we learned we never want children, they are money eaters.
And we closed with, we do not own a house, but we have all the love we need. And we've successfully balanced our household budget with a surplus. Because we turned in our project early, we got extra credit. <laughs> but Miss B still found some areas to deduct points. Minus three points because my eBay engagement ring was too cheap. <laughs> and we received a warning on our household budget because we managed to have a surplus when we could have spent more money each month. Recently, I went home to visit my parents in New Jersey. They've only kept a shoebox amount of my things at this point. And in the bottom, I found my marriage project scrapbook. I flew it home to show my real life husband. My husband, Johnny, not Jay, and I, I know. We eloped a few years ago. There were no guests at our city hall ceremony. Because there was no mandatory checklist, we spent way, way, way less than $25,000 getting married. Instead of a scrapbook, I created a Google spreadsheet called, <laughs> called the San Fran City Hall Elopement Spreadsheet, where I trapped our elopement expenses. Sometimes on our anniversary, I make my husband look at it and marvel at how beautifully I accounted for our special memories within its perfectly <laughs> formatted rows and columns. Marriage license, $91. Groom's wedding band, $14.99. Two bananas for breakfast, $1. He is not a cop and I am not a lawyer. We made different choices since we don't own the board game life. We have no children. We drive a 2004 Toyota Camry. And we don't own a home. We rent an apartment, but we are very happy. I wonder where I got those ideas from. Oh, and my husband shops on eBay all the time, and I do not deduct any points for that. Thank you.